Good morning and welcome to Life Plus Church online on Sunday the 7th of, of June uh, 2020 and just as um, you come to watch this you'll be able to access this service through the Life Plus Church Facebook page in Blairgarry and also through YouTube and the title of the message will be written like this Life Plus Church A Taste for God's Goodness. And so I hope you'll join us uh, uh, through this. I'm going to open with the scripture from Psalm 34 and uh, verses 8 to 10. And it says there, um, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing no good thing. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you this morning, Lord God, that we can come before you and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, that as we worship, Father, and praise your holy name, Lord, you've said that you will be enthroned upon the praises of your people. And so, Lord, we just invite you, we invite your presence, Lord, to fill where we are right now, Father, transforming us from one degree of glory to the next. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Let's sing the great of power together. Raise him.
bless the Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring Now. I certainly have been. 
I'd like to just uh, that news to you just a wee bit later on, so sorry if you're going to have to wait just a wee bit longer for that. We're going to, however, start, we're going to need to go back a wee bit, I think, and, and uh, bring us up to date with where we have been going now for, for some weeks, and uh, I really need to do that in order to bring us into where God is speaking to us uh, during this time, so we'll, we'll be doing that. I'll also be giving you some... Um, steps that we can do to activate what I believe God is also saying to us at this time. So there's a fair bit to get through, um, but by the God's grace we'll get through it easily and, and be encouraged at the end of it, I trust as well. So last week we spoke about God's remnant. We spoke about how God always preserves for himself a people who will follow the promises of God in order to see them fulfilled. These are the kind of people that were, they would not compromise the will of God, they would not compromise God and their devotion and love for Him and their faithfulness to Him through the different generations. They proved to be God's builders, people who would do whatever God asked them to do in their generation. And this is so important. In the days of the Old Testament, of course, um, these people were Israelites and um, people devoted to the Lord. In the New Testament, however, things expanded quite a bit because um, although the church began in Israel, it soon spread to the, to the Gentile nations and, um, and to other cultures and to other, um, other folks that would spread eventually right across the earth. But you know, even within that, the Lord still had His remnant. In all the nations, I believe, God still had people that would not compromise their faith and trust in Christ. They were loyal people, trustworthy. They were faithful followers of Jesus. And this is the mark of the remnant, truly it is. These people loved the Lord, they delighted in Him. If you delight in Jesus, then I believe you're part of God's remnant. But you know, the Lord Jesus also warned us, didn't He, about the end times, about the last days. And He said that we were to, to be careful, to watch and pray when these days came upon us. I believe we are in these days right now. But let's read Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Jesus says this, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things which will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Jesus is talking about a time on the earth when great distress will be across the earth. The nations will be in turmoil. The nations will be in distress. And Jesus is telling us, Watch and pray that you be counted worthy to escape these things that are coming upon the earth. And this is why we've been focusing on putting things right with the Lord. This is why I've been focused on our relationships with God because our relationship with Him is the most important relationship of all. God has called us to live close to Him. He's called us to walk and be guided by the Holy Spirit and to know Him. And the Lord Jesus tells us, Therefore, watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all the things that are going to come upon the earth and to stand before Him, spotless, without blemish. I've spoken already of, in an early message, how Jesus said we are to look for the signs of the times in which we're living in. To me, one of the most important signs for this generation is the establishment of Israel again in their own land. This is highly significant because Jesus says when this takes place, that generation will certainly not pass away until I come again. We are in that generation, folks. We are in that generation after 2,000 years of being scattered throughout the earth. God brought the nation of Israel to birth again on May the 14th, 1948. May the 14th, 1948, and it marked the becoming, it marked that generation that Jesus is speaking about. This generation, it says, that sees Israel established again in their own country. That generation will not die away until the Son of Man comes. We are living in this generation. We are living in exciting times. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. And that's why we have been talking about and making the emphasis to make ourselves ready for His coming. In fact, it's the whole basis of what we've been doing over this last number of months. Anticipating the coming of the Lord again. 
And so this is what Jesus is talking about when he says, watch and pray, that you may be found worthy to escape all these things. Because the Bible says, or the Lord Jesus says, a time will come when great distress will come upon the earth. The man's heart will fail them because of the fear, the trepidation that's going to come upon the earth with the sea is roaring and with earthquakes and pestilences and all kinds of things taking place. Jesus says that same generation will see the coming of the Son of Man again. So there's going to be a lot going on, folks, prior to the coming of Christ. Jesus says, watch and pray that you will be kind of worthy to escape all of those terrible things that's coming and to be able to stand before the Son of Man. And so we've been looking at the life, therefore, of Joshua, the second generation of Israelites. They are about to enter their promised land. And the Bible says that they are camped at Gilgal at the time, Joshua chapter 5. They're, come, they're camped at Gilgal, they're waiting for the, men, the young men to be healed. And they're in their own form, really, their own form of lockdown. But the day will soon be upon them when they will be healed and they will rise up to do battle, to go into, possess the land that God has promised them. And you know, really, that's what the Christian life is all about. It's about rising up and allowing God to take us into new adventures, take us into new places, and new plans that God has for us. From glory to glory, He said, I'm going to take you in, I'm going to develop your nature, I'm going to develop your character, I'm going to make you stronger than you've ever been before. This is God's promise to those that love Him. And so Israel were about to enter a threshold. A threshold that would take them into the territory that God himself said that he would bring them into. This was their rest. After 400 years of slavery in Egypt, God says you will enter into your rest. And fulfilled, of course, Genesis 15 and verse 18, when the Lord said to Abraham, he said this, to your descendants, I have given this land. To your descendants, I have given this land. Listen to these three words. I have given. I have given. In other words, God is saying, it was already theirs before they moved in. I had already promised it to them, so I had already given them the land for them to move into. Before they even drew a sword, God said, the land is yours. This is how God speaks to his children. He speaks to us today also in the same way. We as the church, we also are about to cross over our threshold into God's promises for us. Those promises that God has already given us. The land is there for our taking. And so our preparation time has been to assist us to cross over. Assist us to cross over when it was time to do so. If you remember, the Israelites had just eaten some of the fruit, or the first fruits, of the land of promise. Joshua chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Verse 12 says this, Then the manna ceased, remember the manna bread that they were eating for 40 years? The manna ceased on the day that they had eaten the produce of the land. This is significant. And I'm sure it would be for any of us, after 40 years eating the same thing, now they're eating something different. That would have been highly significant to their taste buds for sure. But it also had another extremely important significance for the nation of Israel. Because this marked the end of a time of desert wanderings. It marked a, a, a time of the end of a time where, where they lived in, in, a, in a place of want, in a place of, of a desert style lifestyle, if you like. That was coming to an end and a new lifestyle was to begin. One that would produce far more for them than they ever thought possible. And that is so important for us as well, is that we realize when something has come to an end and it's something new is about to begin. And that's why we believe we are today. A new day has started. One that would see the hand of God bring Israel into their promised land at the greater heights than they've ever been before. And Israel were given a small taste when they began to eat of the, of, the, um, of the land of Canaan. It was just a small taste of what was to come. But it was a taste that tasted wonderful. I can assure you. Well, so too for the church. I believe we are about to enter our own promises as we approach our threshold. The Lord 
He's going to allow us to taste of what is to come. Do you have a taste for what's to come? Yet we have to remember, folks, that Jesus is the one that takes us in, yes? He is the one that will take us over the threshold. Remember Joshua 5, 13. It says, Joshua was by Jericho. He lifted up his eyes and he looked. Behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. This man said, as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Well, for us, Jesus is the one who leads the armies of heaven. And we need to allow the Lord Jesus to take us into and across our threshold. But please hear this. Remember what Joshua did. It says, Joshua lifted up his eyes and he looked. He lifted up his eyes and he's looked. In the book of Colossians in the New Testament, chapter 3 and verses 1 to 4, we have this same idea. To lift up your eyes and look. It says this, If then you were raised with Christ, Seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on the things of the earth. Verse 4 says, When Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Look up. The Lord says look up. It's time to look up because the glory of the Lord has got something to do with this. And he says you will come in glory because Jesus is already seated in the glory of the Father. And a time is coming when I believe that all that we will need, all that we will acquire on the earth will come from the glory of God. And time will tell about that of course. But it's time to look up folks. It's time to look up to see where the Lord has taken us as a church. And so over the past few months I've been speaking about the time of preparation and we've been seeking the Lord regarding the day when would be the right time for us to cross over our threshold. And this has been an interesting um, exper experience for myself in particular. Because as the weeks rolled on and rolled on, it became kind of more urgent to me that, Father, you need to tell us where and when this is all going to happen. I'm sure some of you have been asking the similar question, when is it going to happen? When are we going to cross over this threshold? How much preparation time are we going to have to go through before we can step over. Well, I want to give you some good news now. And the good news is this, I believe God has shown me where our threshold is going to take us. Where our threshold is going to take us. And it happened, it happened like this, just, just towards the beginning of, of last week, as I was putting this message together, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, give me something to, to kind of finish the message off. Something to encourage everybody with. And straight away, just as I asked that question, the Lord dropped this thought into my heart. He said, very simply, he said, do what Moses did. Do what Moses did. And at the same time as the Lord gave me that instruction, he also gave me the answer as well, because as you probably know, and, and as we know, that Moses did a whole lot of stuff, so it could have been anything. But just as the Lord said, do what Moses did, he also gave me the specific thing that he was speaking about. And we find it in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 18. And it says this, Moses said to the Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory. This is what Moses asked the Lord to do for him. Moses wanted to get so close to the Lord that he could see him face to face. He wanted to draw so near. He wanted to know God so much. He said, oh Lord, please, show me your glory. I want to know you better. I want to know you face to face. The Lord said to Moses, in Exodus 33, 19, God gives his answer to Moses' request. And this is what he says. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will have compassion to whom I will have compassion. This is an Old Testament revelation, really, folks, of the nature and character of Almighty God. All my goodness, he says, will pass before you. 
All my goodness will pass before you. But you know there's a, a New Testament application to this also. I believe this is a prophetic word concerning Christ. Because Jesus did exactly what these words says. He passed before mankind and he proclaimed his name. And he gave mankind a taste of the goodness of God Almighty on the face of the earth. Isn't that what Jesus did? God's goodness passed before them in the person of Jesus Christ. Our threshold, folks, our threshold is going to take us into the immeasurable depths of the goodness of God Almighty. I'll say that again. Our threshold is going to take us into the immeasurable depths of the goodness of God Almighty. Jesus is going to do what Jesus already did. Jesus is going to do what Jesus already did when he walked to earth 2,000 plus years ago. He revealed the kingdom of heaven to mankind. He was God's goodness passing before everyone. He was giving them a taste of what was to come. Jesus is known as the first fruits of those who are born again, who are born of the Spirit of God. The first fruits. He's also known as the, the real manna that came down from heaven. What was the Lord doing? He was, in a, he was a transitional person, wasn't he? He was a transition. He was making one from the Old Testament. The Old Testament that could not deal with the sin problem, really. It just kind of covered it up. But in, through the blood of Jesus Christ, he was going to declare to the world, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he was going to open up a new way for us to be connected to our Father in heaven and receive eternal life through him. This is a new awakening for Israel, for the whole of humanity, through Christ. Through Christ. He's going to do the same for us, folks. God is going to give us a taste that the Lord is good before he takes us over the line. He's going to give us a taste of And so here is our, our word for today. Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2. The Lord says this, Seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above. Set your mind on the things that are above and not on the things of the earth. Because God's glory is all that we need. God's glory is all that God is. And he tells us today, as Joshua looked up and saw the commander of the armies of the Lord, so too the Lord says, it's time to look up. It's time to look to me. It's time to look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, to lead you on. To lead you on from here into the glory because you are also in the glory. Raised up and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And God is saying, I'm going to teach you how to walk in the glory. Amen. God is about to show up. God is about to show up. He's getting ready to take his church to where his church should be. So that the world will know that the God of Israel is also the God of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here we are, here's where we're at just now, here's our part in all of this. I want to end with this, number one please, begin to ask the Lord what Moses asked him, Father show me your glory, it's time to ask him, Father show me your glory, that's step one, show me your glory Father. Step two is this, or number two is this. We must continue to seek him until he does it. Until his glory begins to manifest itself. On Saturday morning I woke up. God very often speaks, speaks to us as we're waking up. I woke up on Saturday morning and the Lord began to drop these thoughts into my heart and my mind. I want to repeat them to you today. And this is what he said. I had to do with seeking him for his glory. He says, for those who want to see my glory, they will need to show me that they are serious about their love for me. It's all about love, folks. It always is about God's love. They will need to seek me with all their heart. And if they do, my promise is this. They will find me. They will find me. This is remnant language, folks. The Lord is saying, this is the character of my remnant. 
They will seek me because they long for me. Their hearts long to see me. They long to see more of me. They long to share in my glory. And so the remnant of God will be those of the body of Christ, born of the Spirit of God, and asking Him and keeping on asking Him. Like the persistent widow in the parable that Jesus gave. Keep on asking, keep on asking, keep on asking until you taste and see that the Lord is good. Till you taste and see that the Lord is good. God is going to give us a taste. He is going to give us a taste of what's to come. This is so important. This will be like a sign for you that you're on the right track. That, a, that a, the vastness of God's glory is also going to be a part of your life. When you begin to taste and see the Lord is good. God has got something for you personally. He's got a goodness for you. He's got something for you that's specific to you. And a time is going to come. If you will seek him, says the Lord, he is going to give you what you're asking for, what your heart longs for. And you're going to see that as a sign of the goodness of God that is going to begin to speak to you and tell you there is much, much more to come. Much, much more to come. Taste and see. He's going to give us a taste of folks. God is going to do it. For those who will seek him. The next thing is that Jesus will be seen in a new light. You will see Christ as you've never seen him before. You will see the goodness of God and the glory of God on a greater level than ever before. This is where the threshold has taken us. Jesus is leading us into this. But you know, you have to make a decision on this also. We have to make a decision to say, yes, Lord, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. I want to be a part of your remnant. I want to be part of those that seek you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love you like that. That's what I want. God is still looking for folks like that. He's still looking to your heart. Like I said last week, he's searching our hearts. The word of God searches our hearts. It divides us up and it, it, it just, it causes us to draw near to him. And so, our threshold is going to take us into a place where God's love is going to be uppermost in our lives. God loves this world for us. A broken and lost world. But God loves it intensely. And he's going to invite us to be a part of that. You know, Jesus has always, Jesus has always been the one that gives us the example of God's love. Always. You know, he was scarred and beaten. He was tortured more than any man has ever been tortured before. He was nailed, crucified to a tree. Well, those who mocked him and those who falsely accused him, they looked on, they looked up at him as he hung on the tree, mocking him still. He saved others, why can't he save himself? And they just mocked him. But what do we see in Jesus? Here's what we don't see. We don't see anger. We don't see rage. We don't see bitterness or defending himself. We don't see him threaten any of them. There's only one thing we see. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. All we see is love, folks. All we see is the love of Christ. And I tell you today, our threshold, our threshold is going to take us into a deeper experience of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ for this world. That's where it's taken us. There's much more to speak on this subject. But I just want to finish with this. Please, let me remind you. Number one, ask the Lord. Show me your glory. Look up and say, Father, show me your glory. That's your first step. That's your first step. And secondly, please, keep asking Him. Keep asking Him. 
Keep asking Him until the Lord begins to reveal His goodness to you. Till God does something that tells you, God has allowed me to taste of the things that's to come. Bless His name. For you folks who are watching this video today, and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, well, I want to, I want to just share the, the gospel with you, as I like to do this every week because it's so important for all of us to get connected. The Bible says that God would have it that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance is our greatest friend. I say this to our church over and over again. A great repentance is our greatest friend because it takes us from one position and it puts us in a better position. And the Lord says, we have all sinned against the Lord. You have sinned against God. We are born with a sinful nature that keeps us separate from Almighty God. And the Bible also tells us that we could do nothing about this, but God Himself did something about it. He sent Jesus, He sent His Son to the earth to live a perfect life, to display the kingdom of heaven on the earth to all men, to tell people there is a greater kingdom than this one. One which one day you will have to stand before the king of that kingdom and give an account of your life. The bad news is, is we cannot enter God's kingdom in our own merits because of the sinful nature that's in us. And that's why Jesus came. When Jesus hung on the cross, the Father poured out the penalty that should have been for us on His own Son. Jesus paid the full penalty so that you and I could have access to heaven and live in eternity forever. That's the good news of great joy that the angels spoke to the shepherds on that night in Bethlehem. Good news of great joy, a Savior has come, who is Christ the Lord. And so for you today, let this be your time, let this be your day, let this be your moment when you give your life to Christ. You're gonna, you need to ask Him to come into your life, you need to put your trust and confidence in Him for your eternal salvation. So I'm going to pray a prayer, like I've been doing every, every week, so I'm just going to pray a prayer. If you pray this with me, please, either get in touch with us, or if you have other Christian uh, friends, relatives, tell them that you've given your life to Jesus today. So let's pray together, just in closing, just in finishing off. God bless you. Just pray this after me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I confess to you that I have sinned against you. I've sinned against other people. Please forgive me for all of my sins. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you paid the full penalty for my sins so that I might receive eternal life. I receive eternal life right now by faith and I put my trust in you Lord Jesus on what you did on the cross at Calvary and how you died and you rose again from the dead and you're now seated in the heavenly places at the Father's right hand. I receive your salvation now, I receive the gift of salvation now from you. I thank you for it. And I choose now to follow you all the days of my life. That I may know you, the only true God. Amen. Folks, if you prayed that prayer with me, as I said earlier, please tell someone uh, in your family or friends um, or use the link below. To, um, to get in touch with us. So that's me finished. My time is gone. But bless you. Take care. And hopefully um, you will see me again next week. Bye bye for now.